Welcome, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Uh, and I feel bad because today is a great day in the life of the church. Today is the day we remember Philander Chase, who was a bishop of the frontier in the early Americas. He was the first bishop of Ohio, the founder of St. John's College sure. in Worthington, Ohio. And, and uh, actually, my parents are members of the community of faith, St. John's, that he was rector of now. Um, so it's been around for a while. He was uh, truly a remarkable figure. He founded Kenyon College. He was the first Bishop of Illinois, or yeah, of Illinois, and he founded Jubilee College, which never quite made it. But so you get an idea of, of how prodigious he was. Really a remarkable human, born in the late 18th century. He was the child of a congregational uh, pastor who uh, hoped that one of his sons would follow him into ministry. None of them did, but Philander, when he was at Dartmouth, got a hold of a book of common prayer, became a lay reader in the Episcopal Church. Next thing you know, he's in the frontier of New York, lay preaching, lay reading, uh, ordained a deacon in the, in the diocese of New York uh, in the early days, and winds up getting ordained to the priesthood and moving out west um, after a short sojourn in Louisiana and I believe in South Carolina or something like that. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while since I've, uh, I actually wrote a biography of him in, uh, in um, seminary and I've read his reminiscences, which is his autobiography. Fascinating read if you get a chance to do so. One of my favorite stories about him was that he was uh, of, of, a, of an incredible stature. He was about 300 pounds. He was 6'4". And as they say, he had, he had fists the size of small hams. Um, he was a farmer as well as a pastor. And in between his planting and his harvest season, his first year as bishop, he rode over 1,300 miles across the frontier of Ohio, baptizing, preaching, and uh, establishing communities of faith in the Episcopal Church. He was uh, at loggerheads with another person we just remembered a short time ago, John Henry Hobart. Um, reason being is that Hobart wanted to see the Episcopal Church, if you will, centered in New York with General Theological Seminary. And Philander said, no, we should have seminaries out west that should, that should feed the young minds uh, that are needing to be trained for ministry. Uh, that he actually traveled, Chase did, to England, secured funding from Lord Gambier, of which Gambier, Ohio is named, Lord Kenyon, for which Kenyon is named, Lady Ross, for which Ross Hall, where all the great music at, and, at Kenyon is played, and also um, the Ransoms and several other folks that were truly remarkable, and Hannah Moore as well, one of the great uh, abolitionists of the day. So really a remarkable person. He was oh, as remarkable as he was, he was also polarizing and uh, was forced to resign both as Bishop of Ohio and President of Kenyon College around 1830, 1831, was succeeded by Charles P. McIlvain, who was one of the great low church bishops of the day and uh, truly a remarkable figure in his time. He, is, he was the 18th Bishop consecrated in this succession. Uh, of the Episcopal Church after William White was the first, or sorry, Samuel Seabury was the first, William White was the second or third, something like that. And on top of that, he eventually succeeded to the role of presiding bishop because of seniority arriving there around the 1850s, before, shortly before his death. He was riding in a carriage with his wife to church and the carriage overturned uh, where he received a concussion. And he said, uh, I'm done for, I, I was a Take me home, I'm done for, was his, was his line to those who followed. He is buried uh, on the grounds of what was Jubilee College, and Jubilee itself is now a National Historic Monument. Kenyon is getting ready to celebrate its bicentennial. Bishop Philander Chase. All right, we are ready for morning prayer. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we are happy to have you with us. If you have any intercessions, please pay, place them in the live chat on Facebook, or if you are so able, um, put them in the comments. Um, we appreciate your presence and we are ready for morning prayer. God is spirit and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. God is the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us worship. Psalms 116 and 117, I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. I love the Lord because he has heard that my voice and my supplications, because the Lord has inclined the Lord's ear to me. Therefore, I will call on the Lord as long as I live. The snares of death, snares of death encompassed, encompassed me. The, the pangs, pangs of shale laid hold on me. I suffered, I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious, Gracious is the Lord, the Lord and righteous. Our God, Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, Return O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord, the Lord has, dealt has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walked before, Walk before the Lord the land, in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return, shall I return to the Lord? For all, all for his bounty to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. All Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. servant. I am your servant, servant the child of your servant girl. girl. You, you have, have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a sac thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows. My vows, O Lord, to the presence of his people. people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol the Lord, all you peoples. For great, great is his steadfast love toward us. The faithfulness the of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Judas. Then he commanded them to bring her in where his silver dinnerware was kept and ordered them to set a table for her with some of his own delicacies and with some of his own wine to drink. But Judas said, I cannot partake of them or it will be an offense, but I will have enough with the things I brought with me. Holofernes nice said to her, if your supply runs out, where can we get you more of the same for none of your people are here with us? Judith replied, as surely as you live, my Lord, your servant will not use up the supplies I have with me before the Lord carries out by my hand what she has determined. And the servants of Holofernes brought her into the tent, and she slept until midnight. 
towards the morning watch, she got up and sent this message to Holofernes. Let my Lord now give orders to allow your servant to go out and pray. So Holofernes commanded his guards not to hinder her. She remained in the camp three days. She went out each night to the valley of Bethulia and bathed at the spring in the camp. After bathing, she prayed the Lord God of Israel to direct her way for the triumph of her people. Then she returned purified and stayed in the tent until she ate her food toward evening. On the fourth day, Holofernes held a banquet for his personal attendants only and did not invite any of his officers. He said to Bagoas, the eunuch who had charge of his personal affairs, Go and persuade the Hebrew woman who is in your care to join us and to eat and drink with us, for it would be a disgrace if we let such a woman go without intercourse, without having intercourse with her. If we do not seduce her, she will laugh at us. So Bagoas left the presence of Holofernes and approached her and said, let this pretty girl not hesitate to come to my Lord to be honored in his presence and to enjoy drinking wine with us and to become today like one of the Assyrian women who served in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Judith replied, who am I to refuse my Lord? Whatever pleases him, I will do at once and it will be a joy to me until the day of my death. So she proceeded to dress herself in all her woman's finery. Her maid went ahead and spread for her on the ground before Holofernes the lambskins he had received from Bagoas for her daily use in reclining. Then Judith came in and lay down. Holofernes' heart was ravished with her and his passion was aroused, for he had been waiting for an opportunity to seduce her from the day he first saw her. So Holofernes said to her, have a drink and be merry with us. Judith said, I will gladly drink, my Lord, because today is the greatest day in my whole life. Then she took what her maid had prepared and ate and drank before him. Alaphrenes was greatly pleased with her and drank a great quantity of wine, much more than he had ever drunk in any one day since he was born. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Jacqueline, I'm sorry you didn't get to the denouement, but for those of you who missed it, Holofernes kind of loses his head over all of these issues. So Judith uh, Bryant triumphs. Take care, Jacqueline. Be well. First canticle today, Song of Wisdom in unison. Wisdom freed a holy people, blameless from oppressor's sword, and withstood with signs and wonders, rulers dread to serve the Lord. Giving them reward of labors led the saints along her way. She was blaze of stars in darkness and a shelter through the day. Through the Red Sea safely brought them, led along the waters steep, but their enemies she swallowed overwhelmed them in the deep. For salvation the righteous praised your name with one accord. Song-filled tongues of newborn people uttered wisdom's mighty word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some itinerant Jewish exorcists tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sphika were doing this. But the evil spirit said to them in reply, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leapt upon them, mastered them all, and so overpowered them that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. When this became known to all residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, everyone was awestruck, and the name of Lord Jesus was praised. Also, many of those who became believers confessed and disclosed their practices. A number of those who practiced magic collect their books and burn them publicly. When the value of these books was calculated, it was found to come to 50,000 silver coins. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is Song of True Motherhood. Together, God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. 
Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God, for the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. Praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, whose son, Jesus Christ, is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, grant that like your servant, Philander Chase, we might have the grace to minister in Christ's name in every place, led by bold witnesses to the gospel of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to offer up your intercessions and thanksgivings, and please do join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We pray for Brandon. We pray for James. We pray for Joe and Joseph as they recover from their procedures and gain health. We give thanks for our confirmation class that began its meeting last night. Give thanks for the beach. Amen to that. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Muhabura, the Church of the Provinces of Uganda. And in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the Youth Council. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. Uh, I appreciate your presence. And uh, we sent Jacqueline off to uh, send, take a friend to the doctors. So we're very honored to have had her for one service or for one lesson only. Jabil, have a great day. We will see you soon, everyone. Take care. Yep. God bless. We'll meet again at five for evening prayer. Bye now.